Hi there, welcome to a Year 13 A-Level and IB Economics video looking at the economic significance of remittances. Uh, this is a key source of external finance for many low and middle income countries. And one of the, the kind of emerging topics in development economics is to think about remittance flows. So first of all, what are remittances? Well, they're defined as any funds transferred from people living and working overseas back to their home country. And as you will see, remittances are a vital source of income for many developing countries. In fact, in 2019, uh, remittance flows, in particular to low and middle income countries, actually became bigger than the value of the flow of foreign direct investment, or FDI, into those nations. Uh, many countries have a gap between what they're investing, what they need to invest as a share of GDP, and the savings they have, domestic savings available to fund that investment. And oftentimes countries also have quite a significant foreign currency gap as well. They run short of, of dollars and euros and, and other currencies to, to fund their imports. And so therefore we say that there's often a foreign currency and a savings gap and therefore, external resources are deemed necessary to fund development, especially especially when national savings are lower than needed to fund capital investment. Now, what I've done with this graphic here is just summarise, hopefully nice and clearly, uh, the main sources of external finance uh, for those type of countries. FDI, overseas aid, uh, debt and portfolio investment, in other words, the ability to raise uh, equity and, and to borrow money from overseas institutions and investors and remittances. Now this chart, really key chart, comes out every year. Uh, it's got hundreds of billions of dollars on the y-axis and it shows the latest data on external flows of funds produced coming into uh, lower middle income countries. And uh, you can see here quite a bit of volatility in some of the data. What are the key points? Well, as of 2019, remittances are the most stable form of external finance. You know, many countries can now sort of build a, quite a steady stream of remittance flows coming into their countries when they're making their, their economic forecasts. Whereas FDI and debt and equity flows are much more volatile, often linked to, to global financial volatility. If we go back 30 years, aid was the biggest source of external finance, but that's now been overtaken by all of the other sources. And crucially, remittance incomes um, have overtaken FDI for the first time, although they are expected to fall by 14% in the wake of the pandemic. Now, here's the key thing. Remittances tend to be in the form of cash, and they tend to come from individual workers sending money back home. Uh, whereas FDI, foreign direct investment, tends to come from companies and, and other organisations. Some countries have a very high level of net remittance inflow. And this tar chart, or this table, sorry, is taken from the, um, the, the latest version of the Human Development Index, published by the United Nations Development Programme. And it shows the, uh, the countries in the world with the biggest net inflow of remittances measured as a percentage of their GDP. Uh, Tonga came extremely high. We were discussing this in class and thinking about uh, the impact on Tongan and Samoan income flows of, for example, full-time professional rugby players uh, living and working in overseas countries, including in Australia, New Zealand, uh, the NRL Rugby League in Australia in particular. Don't forget, remittances are funds sent by migrant workers home to their families. And uh, the United Nations Secretary General, uh, Antonio Guterres, has said that, uh, that remittances are a lifeline in the developing world. So for many countries, remittances are well over 15-20% of their GDP. Although, of course, many of these countries also have a net migration outflow, people leaving the country. If we look at the top figures in the world, India and China received the biggest remittances globally uh, in 2019. India, $76 billion. China, $60 billion. Some big countries there. Of course, uh, the percentage of GDP table I showed before 
with Tonga right at the top. Most of the countries on the right hand side, right hand side here are actually fairly small economies, so therefore remittances are a big percentage of GDP. Uh, if we then look at sub Saharan Africa, Nigeria, $21 billion of remittances, far in excess of, of any other country, including Ghana and Kenya and Senegal. But if you measure it as a percentage of GDP, South Sudan, more than one third of their GDP was remittance income, all the way down to Senegal and Togo, around 10%. The pandemic, the COVID pandemic, has clearly had and is going to have a, a huge impact on remittances. The latest forecast is that there's going to be a something like uh, a 14% fall in remittances over the next two year period. So there's going to be many billions of dollars not flowing to lower middle income countries as a result of the, of the pandemic. So that's the data. Um, what are some of the main pluses? What are the some main benefits and advantages of remittances to, to these countries? Well, let me try and pick out half a dozen points from you. I think it's important to make a distinction between the kind of individual impact and the wider macroeconomic effects. Um, I mean, in theory, remittance incomes can actually help to bring down the, the Gini coefficient, uh, which hopefully you'll know is a measure of inequality, particularly uh, if those remittances flow to the poorest rural areas and families. Now, people often send money from board direct to families for family upkeep, pay medical bills, school fees and family houses, etc. So it, it could, in theory, help to reduce the Gini coefficient. IMF research found that a 1% increase in remittances as a share of GDP could lead to a 22% fall in extreme poverty. And if people have more income to spend, they can spend more on education and nutrition and healthcare and and that could lead to higher productivity. So people might use remittances to finance small businesses. And oftentimes we find that remittances coming into a country can act as a quite a useful stabiliser for consumption and aggregate demand, particularly if the other external factors are causing recession. Point five is important. Many of these countries do have a quite a large savings gap. They have investment needs. There may be a relatively low level of savings, both corporate, government and individual. So remittances can help to cover that gap. And point six, also critical, don't forget the balance of payments. Inflows are counted as a positive, an inflow on the current account of the balance of payments. And therefore, that can help to achieve stronger external balance, a good source of, of dollars and other currencies. An example is that Nigeria's annual remittances, $20 billion plus, actually exceed their oil revenues. So here's a couple of examples, uh, taking one from Bloomberg Africa, uh, that of course Gambia had suffered, suffered terribly from the loss of tourism during the pandemic. But here we have uh, Bloomberg Africa saying that Gambia's record high remittance inflows have more than compensated for the, the, the loss in tourism due to the pandemic. And I was looking at, a, a, we were focusing on Nigeria in our lessons, and we found out that Nigeria's remittances, which we know are pretty big, actually, you know, 10, 10 times FDI flows and I mean, staggering, staggering level of remittances coming into, coming to Nigeria. So in theory, remittances are a strong positive for many countries. But what about, what about the evaluation? What about some of the main potential drawbacks of remittances? Well, one is uh, that these remittances are sent back home, but they cost a lot of money to send. Uh, in fact, many money transfer companies, including Western Union, make, make large amounts of money. And the, the average cost of sending, let's say, $200 or $100, is actually pretty high. It was average, it was 7%. It was close to 9%, 10% in sub-Saharan Africa. Um, so the cost of sending this money... Uh, is, is, is a negative, an offsetting factor, and well above the 3% target, which is the Sustainable Development Goal. The growth effect, the stimulus to incomes and demand of remittances, might be offset partially by the opportunity cost. The fact that to get the money, many workers must have left, uh, leading perhaps to some brain drain effects and to some depopulation effects. Perhaps, if, particularly if younger people 
a leave a country. They may well come back at some point in the future, but there's a negative effect on the labour supply, which you might want to think about. And for some of these countries, the very strong net inflow of remittances could actually cause the exchange rate to appreciate, because it's a changing of currency flows from dollars to, to the domestic currency. If the exchange rate appreciates, in theory, that could damage the price competitiveness of uh, manufacturing industries. Uh, a fourth point there is, I'm not sure how valid this point is, but there is some argument that if you have a very, very strong flow of remittance flows coming in, that might, repeat here, might lead to a negative labour market incentive effect. Some economists call this moral hazard, that if you know you've got this remittance flows coming in, does that mean there's a, a weaker incentive for other people in the household to go out and look for work? Um, it's, a, it's an interesting point. I don't, I haven't read any papers on this, but it might be worth thinking about. The global average cost of sending remittances has come down, but it remains well above the 3% target as part of the Sustainable Development Goals. The, the aim is to bring down the transactions cost down to less than 3%, but actually the latest data says you know, 8 9%, uh, and that for many people is actually quite morally repugnant that that's such a high figure. Well, OK, well, we know that remittances are significant. A couple of examples. In Mexico, the annual value of remittances is greater than the value of their oil exports. For Egypt, the annual US dollar value of remittances is seven times the revenue used from businesses and shipping using the Suez Canal. So for many, many countries, remittances are very significant. They're a big part of the, the growth and development story. And I hope this video has given you a little bit of a feel for, for some of the data and for some of the issues involved. Okay, thank you very much indeed.